Good morning. It's Monday. Another week begins. I didn't wake up doing so well today. Yeah, the weekend's not done being the weekend. I uh, a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress, and I'm I'm behind. I should have gotten out here about 15 minutes earlier. So now I'm stressed about getting to school. I don't feel good. I feel really sad and weak, and I don't know how I'm gonna get through the day. Yeah, that, that's pretty much the case. It's all good. Thank you. No, no. It's, thank you so much. I'm gonna finish my run and, and shower and try and fix myself and try and be okay. It's gonna be a hard one. I can I can feel it, and I'm not. I don't think I'm being negative. I just, I felt this feeling before and it's really hard at school. Maybe I'll just run harder and try and break myself a little and just, I don't know, try and get the crushing. It's like, a, the, today it's like a squeeze in my chest. It's like some, something's got its hand on my heart and it's just crushing me. And that's hard to escape. Okay, well, thank you for listening. Maybe, maybe there'll be better news later, yeah? Have a good day. I do miss my normal life. You know, when I go to leave the house now, I lock the door, I lock the deadbolt, I set up the webcams, I arm the webcams so that if she goes in, it triggers my phone and I know she's at the house. I don't like living like a crazy paranoid shut-in or shut-out, I don't, I don't really know what it is. I'd like to get back to a life where I just leave. I trust the security of my building, I feel safe, so I can just go. But now I have to have security against my wife so that I don't feel haunted and disrespected by her. I want that to end, you know? I just want to feel normal again. And nothing about my life right now feels at all normal. I miss... I miss kiss, kissing someone goodbye and wishing them a good day at work. I miss wondering about someone at work, You're like, how's their day going? And I, I miss looking forward to dinner and talking and catching up on the day and doing things that night. I miss all of that, just the... Just what it's like to be a couple. I have a lot of things to talk about and tell you about. I've been thinking about a lot of things, but I need to go to work for now, so after school. I have a haircut today. I'm really excited. I love my barber. She's the best. So I'm excited to see her, and that's that's something in the future to look forward to. I just, I need that. I need those little carrots to, to get to, but for now I gotta drive. Okay, so that day is done. That was a hard day. I was pretty distracted by feeling bad, feeling tired, feeling kind of grumpy. I mean, I think I did okay. I think the kids did good work, the ones that worked. It's a gray day, everyone's a little off. I'm a little off. Thought about bringing the dog to school with me because I don't feel okay. I don't feel stable or good, but I didn't because I was running late and I'm not doing well. I don't know if this is part of the cycle, but I'm just, I'm anxious today. Like my heart is thumping all day. And even so, my brain is is sending me all sorts of mixed signals. It's it's doing the thing where it gives up, or, or it, it gives up on solving, and it's just like, she's gonna come back. This is so crazy, she's gonna come back. And then the other part of my brain is like, dude, you saw her driving with her boyfriend the other night, going on trips together, laying the psychological groundwork so that she can like introduce him to her parents. She's doing that, she's planning that. I don't know what to think or believe, honestly. And everyone's telling me, you know, she's sneaky. She's, you can't trust her, she's sneaky. And I think back to when I was completely in love with her and had she had my total support. And now she is someone completely different. I don't trust her. I don't think she's honest with me. I think she's self-serving. I mean, she, she devastated me and heart like heart broke me and didn't respectfully get out of our marriage. Who is this person? And I don't know. And the emotion is complicated. Like, mostly I'm confused, you know? Like, I'm confused how this could happen. And then I'm embarrassed that this happened. And if this has been going on for longer, I'm kind of humiliated that I didn't see anything or suspect anything. Humiliated. Like, how? And then you think, going forward, how will I, how will I not fall victim to this again? Am I attracted to smart, manipulative people? I have to go to the barber. And I look at the kids I teach and I think, none of them are in, you know, major relationships and they're all fine to a greater or lesser extent, you know? They have friends and they just do what they do. And I wanna be fine to have friends and just do what I do. But it's almost like, well, when you know more, when you know what love feels like, going back to being by yourself, I mean, I wanna say going back to being by yourself isn't an option. It is an option, it's what's happening right now. But I don't want it because to love somebody is the, it's the greatest thing. I talked to a, a friend last night who I haven't talked to before about this. And she reached out and I'm so grateful. And to retell the story, she offered a lot of really 
great perspectives. She was very kind to me in, in what she thinks about me as a person, and I'm grateful for that. And when I told her about the woman I'm still married to, she actually asked me, like, has she had a midlife crisis? Like, has she had a mental breakdown? And when I've asked other people that question, they just tell me, like, no, she's sneaky. Like, she's done this before. Like, this is what she's like. You know, I, I'm by far her longest relationship. You think, like, maybe I've made her a better person. No, I've, I've improved her life. She's better as a result of me. Who she presents is who she is. Because we've been doing this thing for seven years, and we're really good together. But I can't even believe that now. I don't want to look back on the past seven years and think this was bullshit. And I think about she met with me and the, the thing she wanted to tell me was that the memories we have are real. Like that, it was important that she told me that. I don't know, I need to think about that a little, but like the thing she wanted to clarify that she got out of therapy was the memories I have, like our relationship wasn't bullshit. I don't know, was it? I, I just don't know. That feels a little more normal. I don't look so terrible. God, I love my barber. She's just the best. Typically, we, we have more banter and, and we talk about each other's lives. I was a little more selfish today and just talked about my situation, but she's fabulous. She's probably one of the first people I met in San Diego and she's just consistent and awesome and I'm lucky to know her. She makes me feel more okay. She's just a good soul. And she actually just told me that she has she has friends that are really fun and really great and she'd like to kind of put me in touch with them and, and they just do fun things all the time and it would be, she'd like to loop me in with them. And that's awesome. I totally, totally want that. We'll see what the future holds, I guess. That was just a little, like, little bright spot at the end. She's going to Africa on Monday and I'm super happy for her, so that's great. You know, maybe by the next haircut, I won't be so bad. I hope. I hope there's something makes more sense. Who knows where a month from now I'll be. I hope it's not feeling as bad as I feel right now. I hope it's not. I hope a month from now I'm a little better. I mean, I hope from a month from now I'm super happy and in love and it's all great. I don't think I'm going to find a new person that fast, but maybe somewhere between now and then where there will be a day where I feel like I've had a win because I haven't had it in two months. And where are we? It's Monday. Yeah, it was two months ago today that she came home from the trip. And it was two months ago that I knew something was wrong. Two months. I feel like not so long ago, I was like, oh my God, this is moving so fast. It's not moving so fast. Like two months, two cycles of the full moon. And here we are. And she texted me before to, <laughs> yeah, on my way out of school, she texted to see if I was gonna be home because she just wanted to stop by and say hi. And she is like a drug. I know everything's bad. I know she loves her boyfriend. I know everything she's doing. And part of me was like, oh, it would be good to see her. Like, I just want that hit. I want that charge. I want to see her. So I called someone and they're like, think about it. It's almost the end of the month and she wants money. It's all she's been about is wanting money. She wants to say hi so she can find out if you're going to pay her money. And they're right. They're totally right. But it's hard to believe that that's true. I don't want to believe it. So now I have, what is it? 308. So now I have to go find something to do until after 345 so that I don't see her. I have to go somewhere and, and occupy my time because I'm afraid to see her because it will be bad for me. I hate being afraid of my wife. Up until recently, she's been the greatest person in the world and now I'm afraid to see her. I want to see her, but I'm afraid. I think a lot about electricity or chemistry, and I don't know if I've talked about this, but the thing that was so special about her and I, or is is so special about her and I, is we have really, really good chemistry. I mean, not to mention, like, a real, like, sense of humor is amazing. We're both funny. We both get each other. We love to laugh. Like, we laugh at the same thing. Like, it's amazing. But the chemistry is uniquely good and strong. All kinds of chemistry, not just we have good chemistry. And that's what makes me want to see her all the time. So when things are good, it makes me want to see her. It makes me love her. And when I get home from when I get home from the work, I'm like, oh my god, I love you. Like like I love seeing you. And and when we're apart, even for a little while, seeing her again is like a like a homecoming. It's a it's a reunion. It's the happiest thing. It's electric. And the problem is, it's still electric now. And any contact from her shocks my heart. So when she texted this morning saying, I'm parking at the condo today. It set me back. It shocked my heart. And when she texted saying, will you be home, you know, before 345? Uh, I just want to stop by and say hi. It shocks my heart. It gives me a little charge. It makes me want to see her. It hurts. It's a hurtful shock. 
so the act of will to not see her so I don't get shocked in the heart, it sucks. I don't want to not, I don't want to not want to see her. You know, like, like that's weird. And I don't know if that's a failing on my part or just how sad the circumstances are. Like, it just, it just, it sucks. And every contact I have with her shocks me. Either in the moment, as texts seem to do, or if I see her in person, it takes a day or two before I spiral and plummet lower. So I'm going to trust my friend's advice and not see her today. And, you know, let the first of the month come around and let her pay the mortgage because that's what we've always done and that's what we should do. I'm going to go find something to do for the next hour because I can't go home and take a nap and take the dog out, which are the things I really want to do. I'm grateful for some of my confidants, people I can call when I'm just low, who will talk to me, who will talk me off a ledge, who will keep me from doing things like, like seeing her. And that's what it was like today. She sent a text asking if I would be home. Would I be home before 3.45? She'd like to stop by and say hi. And given the day I had, I was tempted to say, yeah, I'd like to see you. Even though I know it's bad, but it, it's, it is like being an addict. I'm hurting today and I thought maybe the pleasure of just seeing her, maybe that hug I would get, maybe that connection, that contact would be worth all the pain I'd feel afterwards. I thought that, I really did. And I know it's like, I know enough to know it's wrong, but I still thought it. So I'm grateful that I have people I can call and say, hey, listen, here's the deal. I know it's wrong, but I still want. And then they'll, they'll talk to me and be like, listen, it's bad, it's a bad idea, it's gonna be bad for you. So she's coming over because she wants to hound you for money that she doesn't actually need from you. And it, it kind of, it, it hit me and I was like, of course. And it's such a strange feeling to, to have to suspect everything she does. When up until a couple weeks ago, I trusted her completely. I trusted everything. In my eyes, she could do no wrong. I mean, I, I know when she did wrong. I know when she made missteps. I, I know that. It's not like I was totally blind, but I trusted her. I trusted her. She acted in our best interests. She was a good person, and I believe that 100%. And now I have to look at everything through a lens of, yeah, but what does she really want? And that really sucks. So I wasn't here at 3.45. I could have been. I was so tired. I just wanted to come back and nap. But I went elsewhere and I did more research. And that was telling. Things I'm excited about or happy about. I was texting with a friend about, I was texting during the day today about having to buy breeches. You know, those really tight pants for riding horses. And it, it to me, it's kind of comical because I ride in jeans and when my teacher was like, uh, you need to wear breeches and tuck your shirt in. I was sort of like, oh, okay. But it was a twofold thing. One, I was a little embarrassed because I have to wear tight pants. But I'm also grateful that I'm being included in the community. It, it was sort of like, hey, listen, you're, you're part of this thing. Dress the part. It's respectful. You know, it, it's what you do. So I did. So I was, I was talking to a friend about that and just telling the story of how, how I tried on different pants and the tightest of the pants, the woman who was helping me said, those are really good fit. Those look really good on you. And it was sort of like, why these? But I went for it. I, bu <laughs> I bought them. I bought these really tight German sounding pants. And I'm nervous and excited for Wednesday to see what it feels like to ride a horse in them. To Honestly, I, I feel like I'm, it's like dancing at a wedding. I feel like I'm going to show up and everyone's going to be like, ooh, look what he's wearing. And no one's going to give a shit. No one's going to look at me and care at all. Except me, I'll, you know, I'll be putting out there that like, oh, I'm so nervous. Or maybe not, maybe I'll be used to it by then. But the whole thing makes me laugh. So I was talking to her about that and that was really fun. And then later in the day I was talking to her and I talked about how, you know, I'm, I'm trying. That's so, that thing in front of the lens is tiny. It's like a tiny little down feather. It's the size of my finger, but it looks, it was like, whoo. Anyway, sorry. I was talking about my lesson the other day, just talking about how I felt really good. I had made some connections and how, how the teacher had me canter in, go over the jump and canter out. And her response was, that's really advanced stuff. And it made me feel special. Like they're tiny jumps, I know that, but to have somebody who knows a little about horses recognize that it was kind of a big deal was really nice. 
And then I mentioned that I had come from jumping something 12 inches high to 15 inches high, which is comical. It, it truly is. But for me, it still represents growth. And how I said that people had watched me while I did it, thinking, hey, the guy that usually sucks, sucks a little less. <laughs> Let's watch him suck a little less. And that, that, that is truly how I, I perceive of it. You know, like, I'm pretty bad, but it was a little less pretty bad. And her response was, I'm really proud of you. And no one's been proud of me in a really long time. I mean, I'm proud of what I've done, but someone who doesn't have to offered up that they were proud of my accomplishments. And it was really meaningful. You know, it, it just hit me and I was like, thank you. Thank you for being proud of me. Because this is a really lonely time and I'm, 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 I'm running and I'm working out and I'm trying to do all the good things and I feel good about my body, but nobody tells me they're proud of me. And, and I guess that external validation is really important to me. So to have somebody offer that was huge. You know, hey, that little thing you did, I'm proud of you. So if you're watching this, thank you. <laughs> thank you for being proud of me. It meant the world to me today. So that was a great thing. And then there's someone that lives in my building. They're a great couple. They seem really nice. And we've never connected. You know, we, we've never hung out. But I really like them. You know, she's been pregnant for a long time. Probably going on nine months or so. And I saw him in the elevator this morning. And like on his wrist, he had a whole bunch of hospital bands, kind of similar to what I wore when she broke her leg last spring. And he was holding a banana and he had sort of a shocked look. And I was like, oh, wow, so it happened, huh? And he was like, yeah. It ha and, you know, he told me a little bit about how it happened Saturday and it was really fast. And I was like, I'm so happy for you guys. He's like, yeah, it's just a lot. It, it was just cool. It was a little connection. And then tonight when I got home and I was taking the dog out. He was in the lobby getting a package. And I was like, hey, how are you, how are you doing? And he was like, he's like, good. Um, it's just a lot. He's like, we're all home now. And I was like, oh my God. And then I was like, I just thought back to what it was like when we were here and overwhelmed. And I was like, have you guys eaten? And he's like, um, and I was like, listen, I'm going down to the taco stand. Can I get you guys dinner? And he was like, tacos would be awesome. So I took his number and, and you know, I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk the dog, I'm gonna come back in, I'll text you, just tell me what you want and I'll go get it. He was like, great, <laughs> it was awesome. So, so I got to connect with someone new tonight. I got their order, order, I ran down, I got the fish tacos and some chips and guac. And on the way back, I stopped by the convenience store and I got a six pack of, of Heineken and I just left it on their doorstep. And I, think, I don't want to disturb, you know, so I just left it there and I texted him and I was like, hey, your food's here. You know, have a good night. Good luck with your, with your new adventure. And he was like, thank you so much. You know, this is great. What do I owe you? And I was like, no, nothing. It was just nice. Like, it was nice to try and pay kindness forward somehow because I've received so much of it in the past few weeks and in the past year that to finally do something at least a little kind for somebody else, it, it felt normal again. Like, that, that's who I am. I'm so grateful for everyone. And I look forward to a time at which I can get back and just give to people again. I don't, I don't want to take all the time. I just want to be strong and good for others. I had a really long phone call with someone this afternoon who really helped me work through the way I'm feeling currently. Just, just reminding me about what she's done and what she's, what she said and what her actions have been and that she really is looking out for her. And she'll say kind things to me, but almost invariably, there's a reason she's doing it. It's not because she cares about me. She hasn't asked any questions about me. Anything directed towards me starts with an I statement. I hope you're fine. I hope you're okay. I hope you're having an all right day. It's not deeper. Like, it, it really isn't the woman I'm married to. I don't know who she is. You know, she hasn't asked about the half marathon. She, she never told me when the horse arrived in Oregon. She never followed up on the results of my test, nothing. She's focused on her. And when you come to that realization, it's hard. She went from loving me, which I believe she did, to not, to flipping the switch, shutting it off, and just being about herself and her life. I was gonna try and set up a profile on a dating site today, which I, I feel really mixed about, but just given how damn lonely I feel, I thought, you may as well start somewhere, even if it's awkward, even if it's bad. If you don't try, you can't complain so much about being so lonely. But it's getting kind of late and I have schoolwork to do. So I think that's, that's my plan for tomorrow night. Try and be proactive and be less lonely. I don't know if it'll work, but I gotta try, right? Thanks for hanging out and thanks for listening. I hope your day's going well and uh, I'm sure I'll catch up with you tomorrow. See you later.